بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ومن ولا وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وافتح علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحلم وجعلنا من من يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم اجعل أعمالنا خالصة لوجهك ولا تجعل فيها حظا لغيرك رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي Firstly we start off by thanking Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala for each and every favor Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us we send our peace and salutations upon his beloved upon our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his family his friends and all those that follow him up until the day of Qiyamah. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this great ni'mah, whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has afforded us to meet in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for no other reason but so that we can learn from one another, insha'Allah. And we know there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا اجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةُ وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهُ رَوَاهُ مُسْلِمٌ حديث ثريت بي أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه وبي سيد ذات رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من شنس الحديث and he says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that there isn't a group of people وَمَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ A group of people that gathers فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ In the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ They read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ And they learn the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this gathering إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's tranquility, Allah's sakina, descend upon that group of people. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he continues and he says, وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ And Allah's rahma, it envelopes that people. It envelopes the mercy of Allah, envelopes that group of people. And then he says, وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ And the malaika, they encircle or they surround that group of people. And not only that do they surround that group of people, but for as long as the people are sitting in that majlis, in that uh, 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 group of people are sitting in the masjid, the malaikas, they make dua and they ask forgiveness for that group of people. So none of us that are sitting here this evening are here by coincidence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has handpicked each and every one of us. In order for what? So that Allah's mercy may envelope us. So that the malaika can circle us. And then the most important one is, وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهُ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of each and every person that is present here tonight. Allah makes mention of them in a gathering better than this gathering. In another narration, it also comes where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the people that goes out in search of knowledge, what happens to them? Everything, each and every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they make dua for that, for that person. And even the fish in the sea, they supplicate for that person. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our efforts, inshaAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every step that we took to the masjid, or if we drove, for every kilometer we drove, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that a means for our entry into Jannah. Insha'Allah, we have gathered tonight. Uh, this is, I think, the fourth series. We have completed Surah Mulk, Surah Waqi'ah, Surah Sajda. So this evening, insha'Allah, we intend to start with Surah Yasin. And Surah Yasin, we know how much virtue this Surah holds. But before we get into Surah Yasin, 
uh, I hope each and every person sitting here is like uh, uh, Imam Shafi'i. Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, he had a photographic memory. He memorized everything. Everything. When Imam Shafi'i is mentioned in uh, uh, his biography, they say, Imam Shafi'i, when he memorized Quran, he had to close the one page. Because while he was memorizing this page, he would memorize the following page as well, so he'd get confused. So he had to close the one page in order to memorize the first page. So I hope, inshallah, we are like that. Why am I saying that? We mentioned in the very first dabs, we said, what is the intention behind this clause? It is for us to connect with Quran. Our late Mufti, Mufti Ta Rahimahullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him for his shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower him with his blessings. He said shortly before his passing, he called a group of his students, a group of his alumni, and he had a serious meeting with them. And he said his intention is, or what he requests from his students is, that in every masjid in Cape Town, he wants halaqat of Quran. He wants a majma'a like this. He wants in every masjid in the Western Cape. He said, why? Because we are starting to lose touch with Quran. And he told us that he doesn't care in which way we do it. As long as there is in every masjid a halaqat of Quran, whether it is tafsir, whether it is tarjama, whether it is teaching people alif bata, but connect the people to Quran. Why? Because Quran is our fountainhead. Quran is our constitution. Quran is that thing which governs our lives. And he said we need to connect to Quran. If we want a stronger community, connect with Quran. If we want, there, there are different other avenues one may take to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each and every person, whether we know it or whether we don't know it, we are each and every person is on a path of taqwa. Some people are starting off on that path. Some people have, have traversed some distance. And then you get the awliya Allah, those people that enjoy close proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through a majma'a like this, insha'Allah, this is a stepping stone. And then we also made mention in that clause that this is a tarjama-based clause. It is a tarjama-based clause whereby we want to connect the people with the ma'ani of Qur'an, with the meaning of Qur'an. Now there's an Arab saying that says Al-ilmu sayyidun That the acquiring of knowledge Any ilm They say it is exactly the same like hunting And then they say Wal kitabatu qaydun And writing is that uh, 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 That uh, utensil Or that weapon you use to hunt So if we don't And what is kitaba? Writing down so if we are hunting prey, can you hunt prey without a net or without a bow or whatever uh, 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 equipment we're going to use? Is it possible to capture any prey without that equipment? It is impossible. Now the same with us. We requested that the brother try and get them, the brothers and the sisters try and get them the translation Quran, the little blue Quran that they, that they sell at Sawans, where there's a, a, a verse of the Quran, and then there's a blank line. And then you find another verse and, and it continues like that, the entire Qur'an. So the aim of this class is for us to connect with the meaning of Qur'an. To connect with the kalam of Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. The purpose of this class is not for us to come here and sit and make it sound like a lecture. We will be surprised. We completed the entire Surah Waqi'ah. We completed the entire Surah Sajda. We completed the entire Surah Mulk. Now we're going into Surah Yasin. So if we had a little book, if we had a little book and a pencil or a pen for those who are able to, and we jotted down the repetitive, the repetitive uh, uh, vocabs, like for example, min is from, ala, upon, hada, this, tilka, this also in the, fem in the, in the feminine uh, 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 sense. And uh, like that, all that vocabs that comes on every page of Quran, 
if we had recorded it down in the previous three suwar, then by now we wouldn't have struggled if we came across words like uh, fi. You know exactly, okay, fi means in. Min, from. Man, who. Alladhi, he, who. If we wrote these things down by now, that would have been, we would have been past that stage. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, uh, now we say, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about a group of people. Alladhina, they who. We take, for example, the first page of Surah Baqarah. Zalika. Okay. I know that word. Zalika. What is it? That. Zalika al-kitab. That we don't need to drop down. Everybody knows what's a kitab. A kitab is a book. But in that context, it means the Quran. Alladhina. Alif Lamin, Dalik al Kitabu. La. La means no. That we also jo- that we, we don't jot that down. Raib. What is Raib? Doubt. La Raiba fi. Fi is what? In. So there is no doubt in that book. Now comes Alladina now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La Raiba fi Hudalil Mutakin Huda from Hidaya Huda Lik towards for Mutakin from the word taqwa. Muttaqin, if we did this and we visit this words regular, every day I take out my little book at home and I say, okay, what words is there? There's fi, there's dalika, there's man, there's min, alladhi. Then we would have been pakka hafid in, in those words already. And so we build and build and build. This class is, be iznillah, with Allah's permission, it's going to continue, it's going to keep going. After this, we'll do another surah, and after that, another surah. Can we imagine what it will be like after we've completed 10 surah? How much vocab have I jotted down? How much vocab have I memorized? So the moment we listen to Quran, I can make out more or less, I won't know each and every word in the verse, but I have a basic understanding what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. I partially understand I know here they're speaking about the muttaqin. If they speak about a qawm, they're speaking about a group of people. When we, wor- when we hear the words, an-nar, ya Allah speaking about the people and Allah speaking about jannah. When we hear jannah, here they're speaking about people of jannah. And so we build and build and build. After we've, we're done with the first 10 or 15 suwar, we will know so much vocab. But if we're going to come and just sit and Simple example, if we must ask now, uh, how many of us remember the theme of Surah Waqiyah, which was explained in detail? None of us can remember. For those that can remember, Alhamdulillah, it was a benefit. Even if we don't remember, it was still a benefit, because we were still in a gathering in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whereby Malaika Allah Sakina descends upon us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy envelopes us, uh, the Malaika. They encircle this gathering. There is so much of benefit. But there is so much more benefit that we can take. If we just come with a little book and a little pen and start jotting down certain vocabs. And the more vocabs we jot down, the more we build and the more we build. And with that, inshallah, it will increase our love for Quran. Because now I'm going to start, oh man, I want to know exactly what is being said here. I know here and there. And this will incre- increase our love for Quran. But uh, enough said about that, inshallah. We will get into it. Uh, we also explain in all three durus, in Surah Waqiyah, Surah Alif Lam in Sajda, and in Surah Mulk, we said what type of, su- what type of surah each one of them are. If we all can remember, that uh, we explain what is Makki, we get different type of surah. You get a Makki surah and you get a Madani surah. Alright? So, am I correct when I say that a Makki surah was revealed in Makkah and a Madani surah was revealed in Medina? Is it correct or incorrect? Yes. Yaqeenan. Incorrect. MashaAllah. It is not incorrect. There is an opinion. There are scholars that hold that opinion. But the mainstream view, the majority of ulama 
of the Mufassirun, they say that the Makki Suwar, it was revealed قبل الهجرة, before Hijrah. And the Madani Suwar, Suwar again, the plural of Surah. One Surah, many Suwar. There was again a word that we could jot down. Okay, Suwar, one Surah, many Suwar. The Madani Suwar was revealed after Hijrah. So this Surah Yasin is a Makki Surah. And then we also said, what does the Makki Suwar deal with? And we also mentioned, what does the Madani Suwar deal with? So we said the Makki Suwar, because it was before Hijrah, it deals mainly with Aqidah matters. Matters of Aqidah, eschatology. What did we say? I think that word also came twice or thrice. It doesn't only sharpen our Arabic vocab, but even sharpen our English as well. Eschatology is what? It is what happens after death. The questioning in the grave, the uh, resurrection of the people, all those things that is called eschatology. So the Makki Suwar, it deals with eschatology. And uh, it is mentioned, because this is a Tarjama based class, we will keep it very, very concise. We won't go because of time constraints. It is impossible to do tafsir. If we do tafsir from a book like uh, Ibn Kathir, or we take tafsir al-Tabari, or we take one of the more uh, comprehensive taf tafsir kutub, we're going to cover maybe one ayah per evening. So we make it a tarjama based class where we concentrate more on the meaning of the ayat. So we get into the surah Yasin. Now surah Yasin is a Makki surah. And it is mentioned there are three primary themes. We said every surah has a theme. Now in surah Yasin there are three primary themes. The one is Al-Iman bil ba'thi wa nushur To believe. To believe in resurrection one nushur and uh, 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 whatever happens on the day of Qiyamah, what will happen to us? And then the second one is وَقِصَّةُ أَهْلِ الْقَرْيَةِ The people of the village. Al-Qissa of Ahl, the people, al qarya of the village. And this village in particular is the people of Antioch. وَالْأَدِلَّةُ That's a word that everybody knows. Why? Because, mashallah, today there are so much ulama and so much alim. If you tell a person something, listen, your brother, what you are doing is incorrect. Where's your adillah? Where is your adillah? What is adillah again? A plural of dalil. One dalil, many adillah. Wal adillah to wal barahin, evidences ala wahdaniya in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Rabb of the Alameen, the Rabb of everything in, exist in existence. And then they mention that the surah starts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking a qasam from the Quran regarding the correctness or the truthfulness of the wahi, of the wahi, the revelation to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the inspiration and always and also regarding his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his truthfulness. Then it speaks, in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues, and Allah tahaddathat an, an kuffar Quraysh. Allah speaks about the kuffar of Quraysh. Alladhi tamadu fil ghayy wa dhalal. Those that persisted. Those that persisted in rejecting the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa kathabu. Kathabu. They belied. Sayyidi al-Rusul. They, the chief of all the anbiya alayhimu salatu wa salam. The chief of all the messengers, they belied him. Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Fahakka alayhim ma'adhabu allahi wa antiqamihi. And upon them, they are deserved of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal's punishment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is all the introduction to the surah, how they lay it out. 
and then they speak about the story of the people of Antakya, how they belied the messenger that came to them, and he warned them about a painful punishment, and he spoke to them about the Risala, about the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala tariqatil Qur'an, on again, ala tariqatil Qur'an, on the way of the Qur'an, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used previous stories as a lesson for them in order that they may take heed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in the surah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the person that came to them and warned them and he advised them and then what did they do? They killed this messenger that came to them. فَقَتَلُوهُ They killed him. فَأَدْخَلَهُ اللَّهُ الْجَنَّةِ this person that was killed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, entered him into Jannah. And then there is no respite for the criminals, but rather upon them is the destruction of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And then, the sto- then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the surah continues, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings Dalil. وَتَحَدَّثَتْ أَسُورَةُ عَنْ دَلَائِلِ الْقُدْرَةِ وَالْوَحْدَانِيَّةِ Upon the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His oneness. فِي هَذَا الْكَوْنِ الْعَجِيبِ In this magnificent and this strange creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off by explaining uh, the spectacle of this universe and how life springs from this barren land. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws our attention to the night time and how day is extracted from night. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the moon and its different phases. Now this is something truly ajib. Can we imagine Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was unlettered. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was unlettered. More than 1400 years ago. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that time already spoke to people about night comes first, how day is drawn from night. He speaks about the moon and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he speaks about the moon and the different phases of the moon. He speaks about the galaxies and all. For an unlettered man in the middle of the desert, speaking these things, this alone, this alone is clear enough proof. It is clear enough proof that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was indeed a messenger of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And then the surah continues and it speaks about Qiyamah and the different conditions of Qiyamah. وَعَنْ نَفْخَةِ الْبَعْثِ وَالنُّشُورِ How people will be resurrected on that day. أَلَّتِي يَقُومُ النَّاسُ فِيهَا مِنَ الْقُبُورِ How people will actually stand up from their resting places. From our qabr, we will be woken up on that day of Qiyamah we will be woken and we will be in the days what is happening. Who woke me up from my sleep? And that will be the day of Qiyamah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about وَعَنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَهْلِ النَّارِ Allah speaks about the people of Jannah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also goes into detail about speaking about the people of the fire. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws comparison وَالتَّفْرِيقْ بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُجْرِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws comparison between the believers and the criminals fi dhalikal yawmul rahib on that very serious day hatta yastaqirru as-su'ada'i fi rawdatin na'im and then it is brought the good news and the glad tidings of the people of Jannah of the people of Jannah and the ranks wal ashqiya fi darakatil jahim you get darajat going up and then you get darakat going down so when we speak about Jannah, we speak about Darajat. How people will have different levels in Jannah. And when you hear the word Darakat, it means levels usually in the hellfire. وَخُتِمَتْ أَسُورَةُ الْكَرِيمَةُ بِالْحَدِيثِ أَنِ الْمَوْضُوعِ الْأَسَاسِي This is the primary, the primary theme. وَهُوَ مَوْضُوعِ الْبَعْثِ وَالْجَزَاءِ The day of Recompense. 
وأقامة الأدلة والبراهين على حدوثه. Now he mentions التسمية سمية سورة سورة ياسين لأن الله تعالى افتتح سورة الكريمة بها. Allah rises سورة سورة ياسين. It is because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala starts off the surah with this word Yasin, with this word, and nobody knows the meaning of Yasin. And again, this is also to show the miraculous nature of Quran. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, remember, the Quran was revealed to Arabs. It was brought down by Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he's supposed to take the Quran to the Arabs. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we must know Arabs, they were very proud people. They were very proud. They were so proud, especially they were the best in poetry. They had the best poets ever. They loved their language so much that they would memorize the lineage of the camels. But then comes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws their attention to people that were masters of language and then they find something like this just to mention it we find yasin taha alif lamim alif lamim ra kaf ha ya in sad hamim there are so many all those they call it the abbreviated letters huruf al muqatta'at see so we're not writing it down because we didn't bring our books and pens so by the time he's shy, the other one goes for he's shy, and he's almost a hit. But this is the name of the abbreviated letters. It is called the Huruful Muqatta'at, the abbreviated letters. And then uh, here they mention, the author mentioned, by the way, this is a book by uh, Dr. Ali Sabuni, Rahimahullah. Muhammad Ali Sabuni. Now he brings the hadith. Whereby he says, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن لكل شيء قلبا For everything in existence, everything has a heart. Even our cars. As you say, karma is going to be too far. Rusha so so. And then you say, karma so like, but say, atus no harif. Right? رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, إن لكل شيء قلبا For everything they has, everything has a heart. وَقَلْبُ الْقُرْآنِ يَاسِينَ And the heart of the Qur'an is Yasin. And in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَدِدْتُ أَنَّهَا فِي قَلْبِ كُلِّ إِنسَانٍ مِنْ أُمَّتِي The only surah that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned of. He says, وَدِدْتُ I wish أَنَّهَا أَنَّهَا Referring to the surah. That this surah فِي قَلْبِ كُلِّ إِنسَانٍ that it is in the heart of every person min ummati from my ummah. To show the importance and the virtue of Surah Yasin, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I wish that it is in the heart of each and every person of my ummah. Ibn Kathir, he mentioned, he starts off his muqaddimah with his introduction to Surah Yasin. He also brings a hadith and he says, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن لكل شيء قلبا وقلب القرآن ياسين This is a different narration. ومن قرأ ياسين The one that reads Surah Yasin كتب الله له بقراءتها قراءة القرآن عشر مرات The one that recites Surah Yasin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes for him like somebody that has uh, 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 read the entire Quran ten times. For the one that reads Surah Yasin, again to show the status of Surah Yasin, again to show how much virtue the Surah holds, Surah Yasin, it is the reward for that person is like somebody that has read the Quran ten times over. And then again, Ibn Kathir, he brings. من قرأ ياسين في ليلة أصبح مفورا له The one that reads Surah Yasin at night It is a means of expiation of that, of that person Of that person's sins In other words, all our minor sins will be forgiven By doing what? 
by just reciting Surah Yasin. So it will be beautiful if each and every one, and Surah Yasin, I'm sure many of us sitting here, if we didn't memorize it yet, it is very light on our tongue. If a group of us should recite it, then I'll be able to recite with a group because of reciting it so abundant, because of reciting it so much, it has become light on our tongue. So if we make it a part of our life, that I will not each and every morning after performing my Salat and Fajr, I won't do anything until I have read my Surah Yasin. Can we imagine that every day starting of our day by reciting the heart of Quran? And at night, if we are able to, at night, if we are able to also recite Surah Yasin. Why? So that can be an expiation of our sins. Each and every day of our lives, we are committing sin. Those that we know of and those that we don't know of. But there are ways and means of cleansing that sin, of cleaning that slate. How? Number one, by performing our five daily salawat. By reading our daily salawat, every day performing my five daily salah, that is means of cleaning our slate. And then also through suwar like this, reciting surah yasin, it holds so much virtue that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he even ordered us, iqra'u ala mawtakum yasin. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, and uh, uh, I think they discussed this in Umda uh, Bissalik, in a fiqh book. They discuss what to do for the dying person and what to do after the person has passed away. And they mention in that book, it is sunnah, it is good to read Surah Yasin for the persons one day, once they have passed on. Once they have passed on, the moment we can confirm this person has died, iqra'u ala mawtakum yasin. Recite Surah Yasin on your, on your dead. But then the Fuqaha also says, and they bring another hadith that mentioned, that you can even, if we know, if we're visiting a sick person, and we know there's no turnaround for this person, this person is on his loss. He's on his loss. There's no way that uh, 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 this person is going to recover. Even at that time, we all know that when a person is in the pangs of death, when you are on your loss, uh, I don't know how many of us have witnessed before people that's on their loss. We will see people, they no longer stay at those around them. They'll find a place, they'll find a place and they will only stay there. For example, he's laying in on his bed and he was uh, looking around the room all the time. But at that point, of, at, at that point in time, when it comes to the extraction of the ruh, when the ruh is being taken, then they are already in the other realm. They are no longer aware of what's happening around them. They in another realm. They see things that we don't see. So even at that time, when we see this person, there's no hope of reviving this person. This person is on his very last. At that time even, they mention that it is sunnah to recite Surah Yasin because even at that time, it makes their death easier for them. Easier for them. Who could have an easier death in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But each and every person, they will experience and they will taste death. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul mut? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say every person, they will experience death. Allah said, Kullu nafsin dha'iqah. What is dha'iqah? To taste. Allah said, every person will taste death. That means... There is a taste to death. And there are so many ahadith that points towards how different people's ruh will be taken at the time of death. They mention for some it will be like the prick of a pin, the prick of a needle. They said for other people at that time their ruh will be struggling to exit their bodies. And what will happen? It is said in the hadith it is like taking a silk hanky a handkerchief uh, or a, a, a piece of silk cloth and pulling it through a thorn bush, some people's roof will be extracted like that. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant each and every one of us to have a good ending to our lives. And may our taste of death be a very easy one. Because at the time it is mentioned that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was in the pangs of death, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took water and he sprinkled on his face. He sprinkled water on his face. Even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tasted it. If the beloved of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, tasted it, what will our taste of death be like? But if we do our a'mal, we do good deeds, we perform our daily salah, the message is clear. The very first thing, after believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and after believing in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is something that we need to inculcate in our children, we must drill it into the heads from a very young age. You cannot live a life without salah. It is impossible to live a life without salah. And thereafter, once we have them on salah, now we must try and build the love for Qur'an. Let them build a connection with Qur'an. And not only for them, but for us as well. We need to build, a, because if, if one thing is enough, as a reminder, if one thing is enough as a reminder, it is these few words, Al-Qur'an hujjatul laka aw alayka. One of the two. Qur'an, there is no in-between. Listen to it. Al-Qur'an hujjatul laka aw alayka. The Qur'an will either testify for you or against you. There is no middle part. So when will the Qur'an when will it intercede or when will it be a witness for us? Only if we connect to Quran. Only if we read Quran. Even if it is the Surah Alif Bata, even if you are 60, 70, 80, just make intention. Ya Allah, I am making intention. I've been negligent all my life, but I'm going to make a start to learn your book, Ya Allah. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us away, Every good deed is judged according to its ending. Even if we learn uh, one of, of, of our shuyukh here in Cape Town, I can't, get, I can't get the numbers right, but I remember he said he took his time and he worked it out personally. He said it is not difficult to become a hafiz of Quran. It is not difficult. He said Allahu A'lam, I will try and phone him and ask him the numbers again. But say, Mataran, he said, if you learn every day three verses of the Quran, within ten years you will memorize the entire Quran. What is it to learn three lines? Three, if you learn three lines per day, you can become, I'm just mentioning the numbers as a means of example, but I know it is when he, when he told us this, it was a very small number. He said, if you learn either two or three ayat per day, you will complete the Quran within 10 or 12 years. So what will our excuse be? Although it is not wajib to become a hafid of Quran, but can we make a start? If I spend three hours a day on my cell phone, what is wrong in spending 10 minutes with the Quran? Aren't we ummatan wasata? We the ummah of the middle part. We people that balance everything out. So how can I give my phone's half? Our phone's half, it varies. Some one hour, some two hours, some three hours, some four hours. Some of us spend five or more hours a day on our cell phone. What is it for me, even if I'm tired, even if I'm tired tonight? I know people work and some of us do physical work. They are so tired at night. But I'm going to tell myself if I have a 10 minutes, I'm going to try to memorize one line I'm going to try and memorize one line of Quran a day. Before we know it, in 10, 15 years, then I'll see I have memorized the entire Quran. By doing what? By memorizing one line per day. One line per day. How difficult can that be? To memorize one line per day. And we know the hadith where it says that the person that started on this journey of hifz 
and and he has uh, and he is taken away Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes his life that person will be resurrected as a hafid of Quran and there's no number that mentions whether he is like a limit he had to memorize more than five Jews or ten Jews or fifteen Adza no even if we memorized only two pages of our life but we died in that state while we were memorizing one line per day we will be like a hafid of Quran and we all know we don't need to mention what is the reward for a hafid of Quran for the parents of a hafid of Quran they will get a crown brighter than the sun that's for the parents for the sacrifice that they made the sacrifice that the parents made they will they will stand out on the day of Qiyama they will be wearing a crown brighter than the sun one one of of, 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 of the virtues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned for the Hafid of Quran. Can we imagine this? Can we imagine this? That the Hafid of Quran, Allah will say to them, go into Jahannam. Go there and go fetch ten family members who were guaranteed Jahannam. You take them out. Why? Because I honor you. I honor you because you are a Hafid of Quran. So we all we all are able to die as the father of Quran. We are all able. All we need to do is to make a start. I'm going to make Quran a part of my life. I'm going to make it a part of my life in the morning of the Fajr, especially now that Fajr is becoming early. Nobody can tell me they're going to work or first four in the morning. Those that do go to work at that time, Allah reward you abundantly. But uh, I'm going to start from half past four in the morning until quarter to five. I'm going to try to memorize one line. And we go like that through our entire life. In the next five, ten years, we will see, hey, and afterwards, Quran is like that. Once you get into the swing of Quran, it becomes easier and easier and easier. And it is also muscle memory. Your brain stretches. It stretches. The more you memorize Quran, the more the brain opens up. Why? Because it is the kalam of Allah Rabbul Aizzati wal Jalal. And again I made that mistake. Like I do every Friday in my Juma, And like I do in every class. I always go over time. And I never get to the point. We didn't even start with one line of Surah Yasin. But Alhamdulillah our intention was there. And this first was just the introduction. So now at least we know. We know what is a Makki Surah. That it deals with Matters of Aqidah. Why? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before the hijrah, at the advent of Islam, what was his first mission? To get the people's Aqidah right. Get them away from idol worshipping. Get them away uh, uh, from uh, uh, worshipping deities other than Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. Once the Aqidah is solid, now we work on the Iman. First get them away from the pagan practices. Get them away from that. So that's why all the Makki Surahs it is mostly eschatology. Where Rasulullah warns about punishment of the grave. The day of Qiyamah. How will it play out? Rasulullah explains to them. You must only believe in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After that in the Madani Surah. Now it comes. You must make salah. You must give zakah. You must fast in the month of Ramadan. Now all the ahkam comes. But in the beginning it is just aqidah. So inshallah that was an introduction to Surah Yasin. Next week inshallah. Next week Wednesday. We will go a, bit, a little bit quicker. We won't go into detail of the, unless we come across a point that needs explanation. Where there's a nice lesson to take from that. Or something that we can apply in our own lives. Then we will go into that. Otherwise we will concentrate more on the, the meaning of the surah. What is it like? What is it like? We have seen, all of us have seen uh, video clips. The imams of the haram. When they read. And that man just starts sobbing. They just start sobbing. We can do exactly the same. We can do exactly the same when we hear about our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath, Allah's punishment, and we hear du'as in the Quran. We know the meaning of that. How won't that penetrate our hearts? If we know the meaning of Alhamdulillah, Surah Fatiha, if we're reading Surah Yasin, obviously not in the Khadat, or in the, on, a, on a Saturday and a Sunday morning here, yeah, then we're going to read too slow. But if we're reading on our own, and we know each and every word of Surah Yasin, 
we don't know each and every word, we know most of it. We know what Allah is speaking about here. We, we, we know that Allah is speaking about the people of Jahannam. What will their punishment be? How will Allah deal with them? Will Allah be lenient with them? And then to everything is a flip side. And then again, you can hear that high pitch in their voice. You will hear the Imams of the Haram, especially or the Arabs, when they read. One day he reads like this in a sad voice. When he's reading something sad, it's not because he feels like reading sad today. He reads something sad and he understands. And then he goes into that sad melody. And then he comes when you hear about uh, the people of Jannah. When Allah says you will be reclining on couches, low kutufuha damia, low hanging fruits. Low hanging fruits. And then it is explained things that you have never ever tasted in your life. You take one, you take one fruit, you take the first bite, and then it tastes say mathalan, by means of example, it is a very sweet apple. You take a second bite, tastes like a watermelon. One fruit, third bite, tastes like a peach or plum, but sweet fruits. There is nothing. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, What is Jannah? He said, Ma is the wording of the hadith now? Amr. Ma aynun ra'at wa ma uzanun sami'at He said Jannah is what? No eye has seen. So if we see pictures or TikTok videos or we see houses on, on carte blanche not carte blanche, what is that thing where they show? Top building. Or seeing thy beauty. That is deception. Allah saying if I should give you a glimpse of Jannah if I should give you a glimpse of Jannah, your heart will burst. Your heart will burst. That is what Jannah contains. No eye has seen, no ear has ever heard, and no heart can ever fathom what is Jannah. And Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, Allah created that for you and I. It is for us. All that Allah wants from us is to make the sacrifice here, to connect with Quran. Connect our lives to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The moment we taste the sweetness of Iman, then there's no turning back. All that we need to do is, we need to find Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And there's no way to find Allah except through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And through the book of Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. How will we find out about Allah's mercy? In this book. How will we find out about Allah's punishment in this book? How will we know how to navigate through pitfalls of this life? Through this book. Through this book and through the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm really sorry we didn't start tonight. But I think it's also good. So next week inshallah for those of us that can write. Those of us that can write. Try and get the little blue Quran. It's about this size. It's about this size. It's this size. It's a blue book. They sell it at Savants. I think it's 250. Maybe slightly bigger. Little blue Quran. It's not a little blue Quran. It's a blue Quran. The cover is blue. But it's not little. It's big. It's big. And, uh, blue. Yeah. It's blue, yeah. Like a, a light blue. Like uh, the color of that uh, poster. Something similar to that. I believe one or two of the ladies have a copy. Uh, if we can do that, inshallah, and we write it. Because, like we said, how do you capture something? By writing it down. If we're going to sit here and we're not going to write down anything, we heard the story tonight. I might be it again in five or ten years. But the moment we have something documented. What made the ulama, our salafu salihin, what made them great? They loved to write. It was their passion. Regarding Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, one of the greatest Shafi'i scholars, one of the greatest Shafi'i scholars, it was said regarding Imam Nawawi, for two years of his life, for two years he didn't sleep on his back. For two years, what was he doing for the two years? He was writing. He was writing. For two years, that was one stage of his life. It is in his biography. For two years he didn't sleep on his back. He would write. He would become tired. And then he would fall asleep, fall over onto his side, Get up, make wudu, and write again for two years solid like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took Imam Nawawi rahimahullah. 
Most of our fatawa comes from Imam Nawawi from his works, our legal rulings. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken him away at the tender age of 45. At the tender age of Imam Nawawi, only lived to 45. But go to any Islamic library and tell them I want to see Imam Nawawi's work. You will find a big shelf full of books that Imam Nawawi wrote. We struggling to write a risala. I spoke to Faisal the other day and I told him, you know what, a person must write something, even if it is a very small book, on uh, maybe on anything on salah, or, but you need to write something. So I said, we're struggling to write a little risala, surah kain bukichi, like uh, that surah yasin buki, even thinner than that, we're struggling to write that. But you look at people like Imam Ashaf, Imam Nawi, Imam uh, Ibn Hajar, those people, they wrote volumes, volumes. Why? They dedicated their life to Allah, who Rabbul Aizzati wa Jalal. And even Imam al-Shafi, what did he say? وَدِدْتُ أَنَّ النَّاسَ أَخَذُ وَهَذَا الْعِلْمَ أَنِّي ثُمَّ لَا يَنْسِبُونَ إِلَى يَحَرْفَ مِنِّي Imam Nawi, why did Allah accept so much work from him? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he predicted there will come a scholar. And he said, this scholar, he will be from my family. He will be a Qurashi, he will be a Qurashi scholar. And he will light up the East and the West. The ulama, they agreed unanimously, without ikhtilaf, that scholar was Imam al-Shafi'i. Why? Because of his sincerity and his love for Allah's deen. He said, وَدِدْتُ أَنَّ النَّاسَ أَخَذُ وَهَذَا الْعِلْمَ أَنِّي I wish that people can take this knowledge from me. ثُمَّ لَا يَنْسِبُونَ إِلَيَّ حَرْفَ مِنُّ And they shouldn't attribute a single harf of that to me. That was the knowledge must be dispersed. Knowledge must be spread. We don't care who takes the credit. We don't worry about the credit. Our credit is by Allah, Rabbul Aizzati wa Jalal. With that, inshallah, we conclude. Uh, we look forward again to meeting next week, same time, same place, inshallah. Next week, we will get into Surah Yasin and we will start off. There will be no long introduction. We have all the, the, the we had the introduction this evening, alhamdulillah. We spoke about the themes of Surah Yasin. So next week, Summa Akhtar Maghrib, and then we get straight into it and we start with the Surah. وبهذا القدر نكتفي وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك أو before we already in the door but I just want to say جزاكم الله خيرا to each and every one that attended may Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept from us and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless us and truly Allah سبحانه وتعالى will reward us why because we made a sacrifice to be here and like I said Allah have chosen us to be here. We didn't land up here by accident or by coincidence. Allah chose for us to be here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose us again to be here next week. Wa akhiru da'wana. Anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.